Today I'm going to be talking about how to be creative. I think creativity is something that everyone wants and everyone has it, but not everyone realizes that they even have it and because they don't know that they have it, they don't use it. So first of all, I want to talk about what it means to be creative. I want to define the word creativity a little bit. So I think something that a lot of people get caught up on and the reason why we don't believe we have creativity is that we tend to associate that word with only things that are artistic. Even in our daily speech, we say someone is creative if they're artistic, if they're able to draw well or paint well or make music or I don't know, make clay pottery or something, something related to the arts. If they're good at that kind of skill, we tend to say that they're creative. And if we don't possess that skill, we tend to think that, oh, it means that I'm just not creative. But that's actually, I feel, a very limited term for the word creativity. I think creativity and being creative is one of like the most um, widely encompassing terms in our language, actually. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. For me, I think that creativity is not just about being artistic. Sure, that's just one facet, one place, one avenue where you can exercise creativity. But I think at the root of it, creativity and creation is and creating is just being in the state of creating. <laughs> is just being in the state of making something appear that wasn't there before. So it's not just about the art. So let me repeat that. It's about, so being creative is being in the act of creation. And creation is making something exist that wasn't there before. So for example, all of us creates every single day. Every single day, we are in the process of creation. Even if you're sitting still, you're in the process of creation. Why? Because if we look beyond our limited understanding of creation and creativity, beyond the arts, even if we're just sitting down, every single day, we are creating new cells. Every single day, we are creating new thought. Every single day, we are creating new emotions. Every single day, we are creating new plans, new actions. When I, when I move my mouth and talk, that's the process of creation. I'm creating words. And before I create those words, I had to create thought. I had to think about what I'm going to talk about in this podcast. I had to think about what to talk about even about creativity for me to be able to talk about it. So not only did I create the words in the podcast, I created the thoughts. And then before the thoughts, I had to create this physical body in which I can have these thoughts. I had to sustain my neurons, create oxygen, create nutrients, create the food that feeds my brain to create the thought. So my point is, we are never not in the act of creation. We are always creating and at our essence, our essential being, at the core of our being, we are all creators. And you know, if you're religious, I'm not religious personally, but if you're religious and if you believe especially in the Bible, they say that God made man in his image, man or woman. God made human beings in his image. And I think a part of, I think there's really good points in religion. I personally have a lot of issues with religion, but I think religion had a lot of good points. They had a lot of good truths that they were teaching, but I just think it was delivered in the wrong way and understood in the wrong context. So for example, let's take this, take this, um, so we say God is the creator, right? In religion, they say God is the ultimate creator, and he created all life, all humans, all everything that we know of today. And he also said that he created man or woman in his image. And he gave man or woman the ability to do what he does. So if you think about it, human beings, we have the ability to create. We can create life. And that's something that is so, so divine-like, so sacred. The fact that you can create another human being or even like plants or animals, the fact that you can create another life, kind of like how in the Bible, God created, quote-unquote God, created life, 
If you're able to create something, I believe that that by definition makes someone a creator. Like, like any other word in the English language, someone who directs is a director. Someone who writes is a writer. Someone who sings is a singer, right? Someone who creates is a creator. Same thing. So I think that if, if you look at the base of who we are, we are all creators. We have the ability to create life. So creation and being creative is our innate power. It's something that everyone has. Because everyone, no matter what race, what gender, what religion, whatever background, whatever family you came from, every single person has the ability to create. Create life, create cells. We replenish our blood cells, we replenish our cells, we replenish, we, we replenish the oxygen in our bodies, we create ideas, and with that we create ideas, we create words, we create artistic things out there, we are always creating. So I think a really key point in unleashing that creative power inside of you is first and foremost, know that you are always and already are a creator. The fact that you are alive and breathing means you are creating new blood cells, creating life inside of you. So if you know that you are the creator, if you know that you are already in the process of creation when you don't even realize it, I think just knowing that you have that power inside will help a lot of people overcome their mental preconception or mental block that, oh, I'm not a creative person. I think that thought of, oh, I'm not a creative person is what really handicaps people and makes them not free to express themselves, free to think and free to create. It's kind of like when you're sitting on a pot of gold and you don't realize that you're sitting on a pot of gold. If you don't know that you're sitting on that pot, then you can't use that gold to do whatever it is that you want to do, right? So same thing with creativity. If you don't know that you are inherently creative by nature, not just that slim artistic definition of creation and creativity, if you already know that you are creating at every single moment in your life, which by fact you are, I'm not saying this to make you feel good. It's fact that you are always in the process of creating. As I mentioned, creating new thoughts, new emotions, new ideas, new blood cells, new cells. Even if you're sitting still and have no thoughts, you are creating oxygen and creating cells, creating things inside of your body, creating phenomena inside of your body. <laughs> So first and foremost, know that you are already creating and know that you are already a creator. And don't limit the term creation and creativity just by artistic, that artistic definition of how we typically use that word. So for me, for example, um, when, when I first realized that I was already creating, because I've always, like inside of me, I always wanted to be someone who creates, right? I, wanted, I knew that I had a creative drive inside of me and I wanted to exercise that. But something from my personal story, if I can share, is that I really felt blocked because I also understood creativity and the word creation in a very narrow context, in that artistic context that we typically think about when we think about the word creation and creator. But when I thought beyond that, I realized that creation and creativity it's just simply expression. It's just simply expressing who you are, what you have inside. It's expressing the life force that is inside of you. And so for me, like with, for example, like with this podcast, <laughs> at first when I started the podcast, I was so, so, if you guys can imagine, I was so, so scared to do this. Because I thought, oh, it needs to be super creative. What if I'm not creative enough? I, I don't know. I've never done this before. All these limiting thoughts I had as well with creativity. Because I only saw creativity in that narrow context of artistic creativity. But then I realized that creativity is just simply an expression. That there's no right or wrong in creation at all. And that's another very limiting thought that we have about creation. We think that there is good creativity and bad creativity, good art and bad art. 
right? Like we, we see like a, a painting or we see something and we like judge it. We judge it based on our beliefs, our habits, our thoughts, and we say that this is either good or bad. And I think a key point that makes people afraid to even create in the first place is we're af so afraid of that judgment from other people. What is this person going to think about me? What is this person going to think about my podcast? Are people even going to listen to my podcast? Do they even care? That kind of stuff, right? That kind of fear that I don't think, or I, I don't think this is good enough, and I think people are going to judge me for this. That kind of fear really is poison for creativity. So I have a few pointers, a few, four, actually four points that I recommend for how you can be more creative, how you can unleash that creativity inside of you. Four points that I go by based on my experience and based on the people around me and based on what I know. So four points on how to be more creative. Are you ready? One is drop the should and shouldn'ts. Drop the should or shouldn't. If you look, if you take a step back and reflect on your thoughts and really think about why is it so hard for me to create, especially if you want to be creative, if you know you have that creative fire and you're unable to express it and you reflect on yourself, take some quiet time, close your eyes, feel your body, especially your heart. And when you really look at your habits, and what is gripping you from expressing that creativity, 99% of the time, you will realize that inside of your mind, there are a lot of, I should do this, or I shouldn't do this. Creation should be like this. Creation shouldn't be like this. Good art should be like this. Good art shouldn't be like this. Good expression should be like this. Good expression shouldn't be like this. There, there's a very, very clear kind of dividing system inside of your mind that says I should and I shouldn't. And when you realize that your ability, your current reality, your ability doesn't match up with your thought of, oh, well, something good should be like this. Something good shouldn't be like this. If it doesn't match up with your standard inside of your mind of good, should, and um, what, yeah, what it should be, then comes the fear. Well, if I don't match my expectation of what it should be, then how are other people going to perceive it? They're going to judge me. They're going to hate it. They're going to reject it. So all those fears come from that fixed idea of I should be like this, I shouldn't be like that. But as you know, most of the times, your idea of what should and shouldn't is not the same as the person next to you their value system is completely different from yours. Sure, you may be around some people who are similar to you, but at the essence, every individual person has their own different value system, own different way of thinking, own different way of processing the things in their world. So the reason why I say drop the should or shouldn't is because it's all in your head. Inside of our brain, our value system, what we believe is good and bad, should, shouldn't, is so strong that it almost seems like everyone thinks like this. <laughs> Can you relate? It almost feels like this is like the absolute golden standard, and if I don't live up to my expectation, then it's all considered bad, and it's all because our brains are so fixated on that thought. And I think that's why we, we strive for this thing called perfection. You know, perfection is the greatest illusion of the human mind. We strive to be our, our false idea of perfect, whatever that means, whatever that means for you. We strive for this false idea of perfection, but the truth is, is that perfection is not absolute. Meaning my idea of perfection, my concept, what I deem and what I would label something as perfect, is not, does not fall under the same standards as what you would think is perfect. I could think I have the best podcast episode. I could think that this is my best podcast episode based on my idea of perfect. For example, for example. But from your standard of your belief system, you might think this is the worst podcast I've done. 
Do you see what I mean? That my point is is to to show you that this idea of should shouldn't perfection, this standard you have in your head is not as absolute as you think. And when you can let go of that a little bit because you can see that your belief is not so concrete and not so absolute, when you let go a little bit of that mental grip that you have, then you'll be able to relax and let the creativity flow more naturally. This concept of should or shouldn't is kind of like a tight fist. You have a really tight fist and you want air to go through that tight fist and you're like, oh, why can't I get air to go in here? Well, it's because you have a tight fist. There's no opening for the air to go in. So if you want that air to go in, you have to relax your grip. When you relax your grip, naturally, air will flow through your hand. You don't have to do anything to make the air go through. If you just relax your grip, the air will naturally blow through your hand. So same thing. If you let go of that mental standard of what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing, then creativity will flow a lot more freely. And then number two, I kind of touched on number two already, but number two, and all of these, by the way, all of these four points are related to each other. They're separate points, but they're all united with each other as one kind of whole concept. Number two is be flexible. Be flexible, meaning be flexible in what you perceive is good or bad. A lot of the times we judge our own work based on our standard of good or bad. And from our standard, if we perceive this as bad, then we say, oh my God, everyone's going to judge it then. So this is, I just might as well stop. I'm not going to release this to the public because I don't want to be scrutinized by everybody. So that tight concept of good or bad, that tight idea of good or bad, it really freezes us and allows us to not create freely. It creates a mental block, that obstacle. Yeah, I think that's the best way to describe it. Like, let's say, for example, your creative power is like a wind. It's like wind that's blowing. So if there's no obstruction to the wind's path, the wind is going to blow. But now, all of a sudden, if you put a big wall, then the wind has nowhere to go through that wall. And then let's say you're on the other side of that wall. And you're trying to get some wind, but there's a big wall in front of you. And you won't get any wind. So like this. That belief that my work is not good enough, my work is too bad, my work is you know nitpicking every little thing, that creates the wall that prevents energy from flowing. So be flexible. Be flexible and and think about how there's so many different ideas of good or bad, so many different versions of what's good for somebody could be the most terrible thing they've seen, and what's the most beautiful thing someone else has seen could be the ugliest thing someone else has seen. These ideas are not absolute. And no one is right or wrong. It's just your own perception. So be flexible, number two. And three, because these beliefs are not fixed, because there's no golden standard of what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong, just be fearless. Creativity is simply an expression of what you want to say into the world. I believe that every single person has something that they want to say. Whether you realize it on a conscious level or not, even the quietest person, if you really look deep inside of you, on the surface, you may seem like you have nothing to say and you're quiet. But when you look deep inside of you, there is something that your heart wants to say. Some cause you want to fight for. Some, some idea you want to vocalize. Some change you want to make in society. There's something that every single person, in whatever form it is, there's something that our hearts, in other words, our souls, want to express. And creativity is just letting whatever's inside of you come out to the physical world. That intangible, um, invisible soul, that spirit that lives within you, making that visible in the three-dimensional world. That's all creativity is. Making the unseen be seen. Making your thoughts 
be felt tangibly, like that. So because creativity is simply an expression of that, simply an expression of you, whatever it is you want to say, just be fearless. Be fearless. There's no golden standard that says right or wrong, good or bad. Sure, you might have people who love your work, but at the same time, the reality is, is that some people, no matter what you do, are going to hate whatever it is that you're doing. And that's not on you. Don't take it personally. That has nothing to do with you. It just means that their perception of what should be or what's good is not the same as your perception of what should be and what's good. That's it. There's nothing wrong with you. Don't take anything personally. It doesn't mean that you don't deserve to create. It doesn't mean that you're a bad creator. It means nothing about you. What someone's perception of you has nothing to do with you. It's just how they perceive what you're doing. That's it. OK. And my last point, number four, is stop judging yourself. I already mentioned this before, but judgment, especially self-judgment, totally inhibits creativity. It's like the ultimate roadblock that will prevent you from going where it is, wherever it is that you want to go. We naturally put ourselves on a higher standard than what other people put ourselves, put us in. That means that we are more prone to extreme judgment of ourselves, kind of irrational judgment of ourselves, way beyond what other people are judging us for. Think about this. So uh, in my last episode about reaching your goals, where I invited Bama Kim, she mentioned something about this. So think about, can you remember 10 mistakes that other people did in your life? The most recent 10 mistakes you've noticed from other people. I bet you that it's going to be a, a lot harder than thinking about the last 10 mistakes that you did, right? So the point is, is that we're more, aware, we're more aware of our faults and other people aren't paying as much attention to your faults as you think. So stop judging yourself. Stop critiquing yourself beyond what is productive. I think it's good to have feedback, and I think it's good to look back on yourself and uh, like improve yourself based on self-reflection. I think self-reflection is very different from self-judgment. Self-reflection is product productive and progressive, but self-judgment is not productive and progressive at all. It's very diminishing, and it's very, very bad for your, your mental well-being, I believe. So judgment. Don't judge yourself because creativity is just the freedom to be you. And if you critique yourself and judge yourself way beyond what's necessary and what's helpful, it's basically subconsciously you telling yourself that I'm not good enough and I don't deserve to create. Can you see that? Like, Let's say you worked really hard to make something, and then you look at it and you think that this is really terrible. You judge yourself, you critique yourself way beyond what's productive, overly exaggerate and critique yourself and self-judge, and you throw it away and you become discouraged. Who knows, to someone else, that could have been like a $10 million piece of work. But because of your own judgment, your own limited self-beliefs of what you, what you think is good and bad, you threw away an opportunity. And on top of that, by throwing your hard work away, subconsciously you gave yourself the information that I am not good enough and I don't deserve to create. I shouldn't create. I'm not creative. So do you see where I'm going with this? If you spend your whole life repeating that pattern, creating something, really, really negatively judging it, throwing it away, and then telling yourself subconsciously by that action, I'm not worthy to create, I shouldn't create, I'm not good enough, I'm not creative. I'm not creative especially by thinking that for so many occurrences, imagine how many things you judged yourself for in your whole life. Probably more than a million thoughts. If you have more than a million thoughts of, I'm not creative, I'm not good enough, of course it's going to diminish your creativity. 
of course your brain is going to start to actually believe that you're not good enough actually believe that you're not creative because you've been feeding a million thoughts that say that so don't get discouraged if you fall into this category because this is reversible like anything in our bodies we have this amazing ability to destroy ourselves but we also have the amazing ability to recreate ourselves why because we are by nature creative we are by nature a creator so you have the power to recreate yourself into the person that you want to be into a creative person and actually that brings up a really good point because the person you are right now is actually the result of your creation anyway whether you like the person you've become or whether you hate the person you've become it's the persona that you've created through your choices through your thoughts through your actions up until this point in your life so whether you are consciously creating your life or sitting in the passenger seat and thinking that life is just happening to you you are responsible for creating the person you are today so just like that you are responsible for creating the person you will be tomorrow and creating the person that you will be in the years to come and how you create that is through your through your thoughts through your words through your actions ultimately through your choices so if you want to be a creative person you have to first choose to be creative do you choose to be creative if you choose to be creative then it will happen as you choose when you choose something then your brain gets to work on how to make it happen in reality if you choose to be not creative then your brain works to make you not creative your brain doesn't judge good or bad whatever you tell it to do it does so if you choose to be creative rework the wiring in your mind that has told you for so long that you are not creative by how first and foremost realizing that whether you knew it or not you are already creating and because of that you are already the creator and you have been since the beginning of your life so you're already a creator who is already in the process of creating so get out of that habitual thought that I am not a creative person because creativity is not limited to just artistic creativity that's simply one facet of it so you're already a creative person so you just have to remove that thought that I am not creating and I'm not good enough and you'll be able to let the energy of creativity let the wind of creativity blow inside of your mind once again yay <laughs> awesome so if you guys like this episode please subscribe to change your energy's youtube channel and also if you want to comment about something if you have a really good story to share or some tips about creativity please comment down below and i'll re respond to all of your comments as well Yes, thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you guys again next week with another episode. Bye!